Kato on the track, beer. What's going on, Beat Club? We are back today. Thank you for watching. Um, today we're going to, or I'm going to, take you guys through a recent beat that I made. Um, and today's topic will, will be on not just beat production, but more specifically uh, sound selection. Because to me, every dope beat starts with picking the right sounds. Um, and different tips and tricks you can use to achieve the, the type of sound that you're going for. So I'm gonna run you guys through some different plugins that I used, some different effects, um, obviously equalizing and compression. So it won't be too long or drawn out today. Um, you know, I won't go fully in depth into the mixing aspect. Obviously, you know, you can see that I don't even have the full beat arranged. Um, this is basically just the, the foundation, but I really liked how it turned out and it has a really cool, unique kind of sound to it. So I just wanted to show you guys my thought process behind that. Um, all right, so I guess we'll start by just letting you guys hear it. I titled it, I titled this beat Run Faster. I don't know why, it was just <laughs> completely random. Um, but here's what it sounds like. So there it is. Um, really liked how this beat turned out. And I think, you know, when I sat down to, to make this beat, I didn't really just go into it blindly and, and start playing around until I found what worked. I kind of sat down with an idea already in mind. I wanted to make uh, a beat that, that had kind of a trap tempo and a trap feel. That's why it's at 130 BPM. Um, but I wanted it to sound kind of like a, a sampled trap beat, um, but I didn't actually want to use samples. For any of you guys that, that listen to a lot of my music, like you'll, you'll notice that I don't really use a lot of samples, but I try to use sounds that make it sound like a sample. Um, so making my own samples, if you will. But um, So that's the sound that I wanted to go for. Obviously, you know, my trademark kind of sound is is using a lot of heavy 808s and you know I love 808 basses so I wanted to incorporate that um, so yeah I started with with this sound right here it's called Venus pad just a, a stock sound and reason now the first thing I did with this was I turned down the resonance and the frequency so that's gonna cut out a lot of the kind of crystal clear high end which is what I want because when you listen to a lot of sampled records uh, they were recorded on analog so you know obviously recording on analog is going to give you that warmth and depth um, it's not going to give you the crystal clear sound that's produced by a lot of like electronic music these days so you know obviously being on a, a on a DAW um, I'm not recording through analog, so best thing that I can do is kind of trim out some of the high end and give it a, a different kind of texture. So I use the Decimort 2. It's a, basically a bit crusher and resampler, so it'll drop the bit rate. Now the Decimort 2 is not just for reason. You guys can get this as a standalone plugin um, and use it on whatever DAW that you're using. Um, so you'll be able to replicate exactly what I'm doing here. So I wanted to kind of give it that resonance, um, cut out some of the high end, um, and you guys can hear, hear the difference. Now another thing that I did with this sound to achieve the kind of sampled feel was I played with kind of the warp. If you guys listen to it, 
in some parts like the pitch kind of bends a little bit which is common when you're sampling records um, it won't have a consistent sample rate sometimes so uh, I wanted to achieve that by just pitch bending it at certain points So that's something you guys can do, um, no matter what DAW you're using, I'm sure there's a way to do that. Um, now if we go to the mixer, just a couple things that I did, um, more so to achieve that sound was I used a high pass and a low pass filter. For any of you that have watched any of my past video tutorials know that I love using this filter. Um, and this is just again to cut out some of the high end and low end. I cut out some of the low end to make room for the 808 and the kick. So you can see, especially with that low pass filter, it cuts out a lot of that, those harsh high end frequencies. And ran the the uh, ran the compressor before the the EQ, or I'm sorry, the EQ and then the compressor. The next sound I used is one of my favorite go-to sounds that I've been using in a lot of my my beats these days. Uh, it's called the Strawberry Field Mellotron. Strawberry Feel, sorry. Um, and this is just a really cool, like, and this is part of the Abbey Road Keyboards uh, Reason Refill. There might be something similar to it. I don't know if there's like a VST. Um, but in any case, this refill has some really cool sounds. Obviously referring to the Beatles classic album, Abbey Road. Um, and uh, this is the sound that I use, like to use in a lot of my beats. Already comes stock with like kind of a, a sampled lo-fi feel, so I felt like it, it fit in perfect for what I was trying to do. Already those two instruments alone, you know, sounds great um, and that is what I wanted to to start with and kind of build off of so I have the the bulk of my melody is right there um, let's see we'll go into the strings next before we go into the drums so for the strings it was a basic just kind of like, I'll let you guys hear it. These three knobs right here made a huge difference in how it sounded. So if we take it back to how it is stock, Minor EQ changes to the low mid frequencies, high mid frequencies, cut out a little bit of gain there. And then with the high pass filter and low pass filter again. And 
then make it a little darker sounding with the with the low pass filter, not as not as crisp and bright. So there's, there's pretty much the whole melody right there. Um, last part that I needed to really add to, to finish, it, finish it off was the drums. Now with this hi-hat, it's called Airbender. Uh, this one is again from the Decap Drums That Knock Volume 1. Um, so this was a really, uh, I picked this hi-hat just because it's not as like crisp and clean, has a, has a cool stereo feel. Um, and I just pitched it down a little bit, took out some of the, the high-end tone. So obviously, you know, again, the name of the game with this, with this beat was to make it sound lo-fi, but still have it cut through you know, the mix on like, if you're listening on a phone, you know, I don't want it to sound so lo-fi that you can't really hear the details of the beat. Um, so that's why I chose this hi-hat, snare, clap. I don't think I use that one or that. Crash, almost like a 808 keyboard. Well, this is the 909 crash. Um, so from a classic, analog keyboard secondary snare open hi-hat now one thing I did with my drums I didn't want it to sound robotic. Um, I wanted to give it a very human kind of feel and have a little bit of groove and a little bit of swing. So doing that, now there's two ways to go about that. You can actually, you know, you can record it um, while you're playing the MIDI on your, on your keyboard or your controller and you can not quantize it. Or um, in your specific DAW, I know Reason has a way to do it called the Regroove Mixer which basically will adjust the slide and the shuffle of whatever note that you want. Um, so this is just another way of like non-quantizing it and uh, so adjusting the slide, let's see, this is channel A1, so I applied this to the hi-hat. So if you listen to the hi-hat, it's not playing on, it's not playing exactly on the downbeat. It's kind of hitting slightly after the the one or the downbeat the shuffle will add will kind of change the i guess the uh the spacing in between like certain notes so again it's just adding that that human feel So with a couple of the instruments, I slid it, I slide a little bit to the left, which will make it hit before the downbeat, or slide it a little to the right, which will make it hit a little after the downbeat. Um, so that's just a cool little little tip that I like to use on some of my tracks. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. And then in the mixer, let's see. Again, the high pass, low pass filter, just cutting out a little bit of the low end to make room for the, the kick in the 808 and uh, trimming off a little bit of the high end at around 11.65. So anything above 11.65 kilohertz will be cut. So most of the low end will be occupied in this area which is why I want to make room.
Now let's move on to my favorite part, which is the kick and the 808. Now typically when I, I know you guys have seen this probably before, but typically with my kick and 808, I'll side chain it. But with this particular track, I felt like it was already hitting how I liked. So I didn't side chain the kick and the 808. Now the kick is from the kick is from the uh, the decap drums that knock volume one has a lot of really cool sounds uh, a lot of good drums that that kind of cut through the mix so even if you're listening to this kick alone on a cell phone you'll still be able to hear it punch through the mix. Um, one cool thing that I did with the 808 is I created a parallel channel, so basically a duplicate channel, because if you listen to the stock 808, it's hitting at very low frequencies, so you most likely would not be able to hear this on if you're listening on a phone. The frequencies that you'll be able to hear on a phone are going to hit probably somewhere in, in these regions. So I created a parallel channel and added some distortion. So I used uh, what's called pulverizer. You can use any, any basic distortion plugin in whatever DAW you're using and the distortion should add a little bit of color and brightness to your to whatever sound you're distorting. Which will make it punch through the mix a little bit more. So if you play both of those at the same time, and then what I did to avoid clashing was I just used, again, the high pass, low pass filters, um, cut out some of the low end on the distortion channel, uh, because this, this 808 was already doing its job. So if you put them together, very full sound. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. There's there's a, a, a really good place to start. All I really need to do is arrange the beat into a song format, verse, you know, intro, verses, chorus, um, add, a, add a couple drops maybe, um, and that's it. You know, there's a finished beat right there. So hopefully that helped you guys. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave something in the comments, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.